Hey, good morning. It's time for Coffee Talk. It is Sunday, 7 in the morning. I've got my coffee. It's a nice Sam's Club medium roast blend <laughs> out of a plastic K-cup. It's delicious. It is delicious. All right, standard stuff. Fairly short today. We're going to talk about channel news. We'll get the emissions and specials. Check out those, see what's going on. Subjects du jour. I'm going to look at a QA and a from the senior community manager over on the CIS server. Got some interesting things to say. I'm actually going to take a little bit from one blog and a little bit from another because it really kind of illustrates the difference in context and how the translations go and how sometimes people can get spun up based on what they read on the interwebs and then you take a look at the two different sides of it and you say wait a minute that's maybe not exactly what that guy was saying or maybe he's not as big a jerk as he sounds based on the translation so we'll talk about that for a while and of course we have to have a conclusion because every good briefing has a start and a finish right <laughs> let's get started well, channel news, what am I up to? What am I up to? Well, you can see that the heavy tank number six is spinning around in my garage right there. So what I'm currently doing, I have this goal I sort of set here at the beginning of the year. I'm going to take every tank that doesn't have 100 battles and I'm going to fight it to 100 battles, which has been very satisfying with the tanks that were in the mid to upper 90s because I've kind of been moving through them fast. But now I'm getting down to the lower 90s and it's starting to feel grindy. And I know when I get to the ones that are at 50, that's really going to be bad. And I may abandon it completely, but right now it's kind of interesting because I actually streamed yesterday. That's the other part of the news. I'm getting back to the streaming thing if I can here. But it's allowing me to play all kinds of different tanks. So you can see down here I've set as primary a bunch of my tanks that are in the 80s to 90s as far as battle count goes. Some of these I've had to rebuy, so I'm adding tanks to my list. I have 21 slots, so why not? Use some of my silver up there to do that. Resetting up, kind of looking at crews. It's given me a chance to, to re-wicker some crews and figure out what's going on with some of that as well. And then just revisit tanks that I haven't played for a long, long time or really had a reason to play. So on the stream, I played a wide variety of interesting tanks. I think I was on the T-57, the Cromwell, the Bromwell, and the Heavy Tank Number 6 yesterday on the stream. So that was actually kind of fun playing those different tanks that I just don't play a bunch. I even rebought the Lorraine. You can't see it. Yeah, there it is right there. I even bought the Lorraine. <laughs> rebought it. The Lorraine 15550 and Artie. <gasps> Don't play Artie. <it's... laughs> anyway, so that's what's going on with that. Streaming, playing a wide variety of tanks. Obviously, I always take requests on the on the channel or when I'm streaming. I will also take requests on the channel if you want me to do any reviews. Right now, I have the T3485M and the T62 have been asked for for review, so I'll be working on those. I need to add those as primary here as well. Just so you know, this little guy right here, primary vehicles, if you right click on the vehicle, right now it says uncheck for primary, but if it wasn't one of the primary vehicles, I could click that. And what it does is it moves all of those primary vehicles to the left, and they should be the first thing you see on your scroll bar down here, okay, on your rows, if you did not know that. All right, let's move on. Okay, specials. This loot box thing is going on till the 14th. I believe it'll be the 13th, which is a Sunday, is your last chance to buy it, unless you're going to stay up early a.m. in the States anyway on Monday, but at server transfer or changeover, whatever they call it, Monday morning, I believe those will go away. So you've got about, what, six to seven days to do that if you want to get loot boxes. What else? Uh, the. The low, the Lurva, is on sale. And $54.99 with 30 days is the same as the Lurva normally. So you're getting 30 days of premium free basically out of that with some of those missions for the specifically for the low. I think still the loot boxes are better for gold, but if you actually want a low, you can't get one out of the loot boxes. That's actually a pretty decent deal, to be quite honest. And same thing goes for the tier 8 FB 4202 and this was interesting to me I hadn't seen it on sale for a long time I was waiting and waiting and waiting and it actually came up on the advent so I picked it up on the advent but it's back on sale the small term a lot of people don't like it I think it's okay that's that's one of those war chests though so it's extremely expensive 
Going over to gold, there's really nothing on the gold to say. That's one of those special deals for me. It is a good deal, but it's got silver in it, and I don't need 100,000 credits. I can make that pretty easy. The rest of it is pretty boilerplate stuff. Nothing much to add there. Again, premium count, not much going on there other than it's got this little light tank deal. 30 days of premium for 12 bucks plus a little light tank. Remember, on the on those kind, you don't get the gold for the tank. Re read the details down at the bottom. I, I know I say that nearly every time, but just make sure you read it. And these are all just repeats. This is all right. All these are, I've complained about this a lot, and I don't know if it's happenstance or if they're actually fixing it at this point, but the T62, the Schmaltrum, and the T2065 are all in a row. Down here, they're a little mixed up because you get to just being able to buy the tank itself, but whatever. At least it's some kind of order to the madness. Not much else going on in tanks. It's a lot of small tanks. I wouldn't really. I mean, Tetrarch's okay if you just want a little small tank. And we just get the specials. There's really nothing else. Really nothing else going on. Specials are still the holiday ops thing. All those tanks I just mentioned. And that is pretty much it. Not a whole lot going on. We just had a whole holiday season of all that kind of thing. So really, at the end of the day, that's about it. Let us go to the missions. Missions. Not a whole lot going on here. Is there any events? No, there's no events. For the missions, New Year Bustle is going to the 10th, I believe. No, sorry, this is also the 14th. Incorrect. So New Year Bustle will go to the 14th. Tournament missions are still up if you do tournaments. I have not done any of those. I mean, that's something I might do. That might make that a goal, actually, this year. I might try some tournaments, see what goes on with that. I have no idea. It's been a long, long time since I even bothered with a tournament. The Kranwagnagen is on track, so if you're grinding up the Swedish line, that's a good deal. I played the Leo a bit. Why was I playing the Leo? Oh, somebody wanted a review. There's a Leo review I recently dropped, and I managed to get 21,000. I may just grab it just to finish up the last, what, 3,000 or so experience and get a few goodies right there. I might as well. Why not? Tank Mastery, standard stuff right there. Holy cow, this is terrible. Supply Raid. So this was a, a pretty standard weekend. There was a supply raid mission set for the weekend, and that actually goes to January. Yeah, it does go January 7th, so it is this weekend. And then it was times three crew experience for this weekend. I'd really like to get to where I preview the weekend on Fridays, but Fridays are kind of hectic for me, so that's going to be a on and off kind of thing. Play your tank class right. I like this. I'm glad they're keeping this thing up because they did reset it. We talked about that, I think, last week on the Coffee Talk. I said, I wonder if they're going to keep resetting this. And so far, has it been three or four months? Two at least, maybe more. Maybe three or four. So that's a that's a great one. That is really a help for grinding, man. Really a help for grinding. Again, the warning and caveat, make sure you have the tank. When you're ready to trip that 401 and finish it, make sure you're driving the tank you want that experience to go to. And then other missions is pretty much nothing. Nothing. And that's it for the missions, man. Pretty boring, really, at the end of the day. Quick update on my campaign. I'm getting, a, getting along a bit on the Excalibur. I did finish Alliance, 15 of 15. This one has... I've got two, or th two of three of the Mastery Badge. I actually did that on stream now. I think about it. When I started stream, I was at 0 of 3. I actually finished it. Then I looked at it. And I must have Alliance, yeah, because I did one in the U.S. Who is this for? Uh, that's right. I got one in the U.K. tank and one in the U.S. tank on stream last night. So I got two of the three. Fantastic. That's the with honors part. So nice. Once I get that with honors, remember you've got to get the Excalibur before you can move on to the Chimera. 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 Chichera. <laughs> I just butcher names, man. That's the thing I do. It is the thing I do. When you get the mastery, remember you'll get the order, which means I think you can then automatically get 15 on something else. And I believe you've got to, like I said, get the Excalibur before you can move on to the Chimera, the Chimera. All right. Enough of that. Let's move on. What's next? What's next on the docket? Oh, the subjects du jour. This is fun. Let's go check out some Q&A from the senior community manager on the Russian server. I think it, I don't know if he's the senior senior or the senior on the Russian, but anyway, 
one of the community managers. I'm actually going to go through each one of these because I got it off of two of the uh, of the blogs out there. So the Armored Patrol, and the other one is I think the Daily Bounce. Is that what we got going on here? Yes, the Daily Bounce, which are two great blogs. All right, good stuff coming out of both of those. And I. I'm assuming they're doing their due diligence. They've got different people, different contacts. People translate things differently. But I thought it was interesting because I figured that we'd look at one. I, I'm going to go over the first one and then over the second one. But I figured we'd look at one question that was obviously the same question translated slightly differently. So if we go over here to the Armored Patrol and we look at the question about gold ammo. So the question is right here and it says, why not implement quantity limits for gold, am gold ammo? instead of nerfing damage. Answer, this would mean the ammo would be used against heavy armored targets anyway. It wouldn't change anything. Okay, so on the face of it, you go, well, it would change things, I think. People wouldn't spam, wouldn't carry full loadouts of gold and they wouldn't be spamming it the entire game. Personally, I don't think that's the answer. I don't think a damage nerf is the answer and I don't think limiting the ammo quantity is an answer. I think readjusting the pen value to a much lower value so it's not so clearly better is actually the answer. That's my personal opinion. We'll see how that plays out. However, that's not the point of that. The point is that is the question and answer. It says this would mean ammo used against heavy targets. Anyway, it wouldn't change a thing. So let's jump over here to the daily bounce. And it's the same question. Obviously, this is taken from the same interview, which was during a stream on the Russian server, as I understand it. So they're just chit-chatting, having a QA. and a all right, so wouldn't it be easier, yada, yada. Well, in any case, during the first part of the battle, a huge amount of premium shells would be fired at armored targets. And that would be like if nothing was changed. Now, if you take, you, you got to take both of those. You got to read it. Because at first, the answer on the other one kind of irritated me a little bit. I'm like, well, that's kind of BS. It's not really an answer. That's not an answer. Well, th this is better, I think, because it's more of the answer. And it really has to do with who's translating and how much of it they want to translate. Are they translating exactly? Are they paraphrasing? Are they taking their bias and only putting what they think is important in it? There's a lot of, a lot to that. You, you and I, you may actually, I don't speak Russian. So I, if that's the language that it was in, obviously it was translated from something. So I don't know the context of the answer, but that one seems more reasonable. When I look at it on the face of it, I say, okay, valid. And that's kind of my point. Early in the game, you're still gonna have people blasting premium because early damage matters at the heavily armored targets. It's interesting to me, though, I will say that, that they get into this armored targets thing and they don't discuss other things like weak spots and that kind of thing or the idea that they have two wildly different varying pen values. It's just kind of this, well, arm, heavily armored targets need premium to pen. Okay, well, there's a lot more to it. So I just wanted to mention that early on while we go through this. So I'm just going to just go through one. There are some questions on the one blog that aren't on the other just based on they didn't include those questions. There's probably a lot more banter that wasn't included on these. So, Vlachev Ushakov, Ushakov, I don't know, I said it wrong. <clears throat> VU, they talked to V. So what did V have to say? I thought this was kind of interesting. Why did the Santa vs. Krampus event not appear on the CIS server? This was an EU server idea. We don't copy paste events between servers. All right, fair enough. I saw, it begs the question, why not? If it's a good one, maybe Krampus isn't a thing in, in Russia. They wouldn't they wouldn't understand it. I didn't really either. I think we copy pasted it because we had it. <laughs> anyway, that's that's one of those non-answers. And again, there may be more context. I'll just talk about what I see here. But uh, that's interesting. Why can't we get big boxes without paying? Many streamers do giveaways. Try your luck there. Okay, valid. That that's one way to do it. But that's not an answer to the question. The, the question is, why can't we somehow have it? And I've talked about that in the past. Why not have some of the missions give a big box? It could be one. It could be only a couple during the whole event, but at least it would be kind of cool to just, for the freemium guys, and that just throws that out there that, hey, I play the game, I play the game, and I might get one of the cool rewards. Oh, there's an idea. No, you must pay to get the cool rewards. Okay, got it. Why don't you triple the team damage penalty instead of removing it? Because accidents happen and we don't want to punish the players for them. Yeah, valid, valid. I don't, I'm not sure really. Um, I get shot a lot. Not on, not on purpose, I don't think. Just because I'm so active, I tend to get shot in the back of the turret. And as I'm moving in, tend to get shot. 
already rounds that were already on the way because I tend to get close, I get hit by them. Already sort of a different animal because it doesn't quite get punished as hard anyway. That's a whole other subject. So I'm not really sure where I am on that. I, I would like there to be a punishment, and I think there already is. I don't think it's big enough, though. It's very minimal. It, it could be double and still not matter much. So I don't, I don't really like that answer. I, I understand the reasoning for it, and I do agree with the accidents thing, but I think there should be a little bit more incentive to not shoot your friends, whether it's accidentally or not, to be quite honest. Because when you say accidents, that's not really true. You, you pickled the shot, and I know I take some heat for this, but it's more of a, a weapons safety thing and feel the fire thing that you learn in the military. If you pull the trigger, it is your fault. It is your fault. Now, there may be mitigating circumstances. People may make it very hard not to shoot them. I get that. But at the end of the day, the only way to make that whole thing work is that you are 100% responsible for any rounds you send down range. That's, that's just how it is. All right. It's a game. I got it. Noted. But... I think you can still apply the same thing. And the reason I, I like that applying that thing is it makes you more careful and think about what you're doing, which just helps the team. Okie doke. That was a lot on that. Quantity. Where was I? Why not implement quantity? We talked about that. Do you, do you plan to introduce more mods into the game client? We're constantly monitoring which mods should be integrated with the base game. Personally, I'd like to see session stats. I agree. That'd be cool. Uh, I think they're very slow on putting the good mods in. I think they've got a lot of them in there now. I think they have kind of min run some of them. As one example, why are there only two rows on the carousel? I don't understand that. I have still complain about that to this day. They implemented it and they gave us a choice of one or two. It should go to four. I understand that resolution on monitors matters and size of monitors and things, and there's probably a lot of people who can't use four, but there's a lot of people who can and have a lot of tanks. So I, I don't, it seems like such a no brainer that would have absolutely zero effect on them and so easy just to code it and put it in that it shouldn't matter. I, I don't really understand that. All right, session stats, I would be on board with, that'd be great. I think you can think of a bunch of stuff. I would like better sorting capability within the tank carousel. All right, will you allow us to pick up ma pick maps we want to play on? Excuse me. That was interesting. Wait for premium account changes, test will show. This new idea of a new premium account, a better premium account, they're going to actually change the premium account and have it do more things. Because their reasoning is that with reserves and some of the specials and things, you can basically have a premium account without having a premium account. So now they want to incentivize premium account more. I, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought about it. I never thought my premium account was bad or good. or Well, it was good. But I never thought it wasn't good enough. That was an interesting thought that never crossed my mind. So if it never crossed my mind, I kind of doubt it crossed many other customers' mind. And now I'm wondering why it's even crossing their mind, <laughs> except monetization and making more money. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't like that. I don't want people to be able to pick and choose maps. That That's going to hide the noise of what maps are bad. So I, I don't like that. Do you plan to remove old unused accounts and, and free up some nicknames? We're already doing that, sometimes unannounced. We'll get to that on the other blog, but I think that's primarily RU. But I don't, I've never really heard of that around here. That would be nice. That's a hard one, though, because people made that account, and who knows if they'll come back. So I don't know what the what the time frame is, is going to be. Uh, I don't know if they have to warn people via an email. It, that was an odd one. Why is changing your nickname so expensive so you don't molest our servers with queries? We'll get to it on the other one. At first, I thought that was kind of a flippant answer, but that's not the whole answer, apparently, from the translation. But he's got a good point. It's so you don't constantly, basically, so you don't constantly change your your nickname. And you can, if you're a troll, you can do that to kind of hide your tracks and what you're doing. Hopefully, all your strikes and everything, all your team damage and stuff sticks with you. I don't see why it would not. It's doesn't matter what your account's called. It's account number X blah, blah, blah on the server. But I do understand what they're talking about. But there's no reason why you can't make it yearly and make it less expensive. It just seems like that's an income stream right there. People get tired of their nickname. 
I mean, the kid's 15 and he named himself Dopey Bone Dog. And now he's 22 and he doesn't want to be Dopey Bone Dog anymore. Let, <laughs> why does it have to be so expensive? All right. Any plans on enabling more players to get the 907 and VK7201? We haven't decided yet the list of events or rewards. Okay. I would like that. This I think he's actually asking about the bonds thing. When are those tanks or when are any tanks going to be available for bonds? My understanding is that right now the first things they're thinking about are things like the Foch 155 and the FV Death Star thing. That was replaced by the Badger. I already have those, but they're 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 reward tanks now. They're not premium. They work for training any crew, but they don't make you any extra money. So we'll see what happens with that. The IS-3 has an automatic loading mechanism. We should give it to the IS-7 now because that would be historically accurate. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's dopey. I don't even need to go into the reasons why that's dumb. I think he was just goofing around with That's the other thing. You don't know the context of the question. They may have been laughing when they asked it. All right. Ten reports per day are insufficient. An increase, maybe? Who... Who is doing 10 reports a day? Are any of my subscribers and watchers reporting 10 people a day? Why? Why are you, why bother with 10? I don't know. I suppose, well, I did a stream the other day. I reported zero and all kinds of dumb things happened. Three or four hours I played, at least three. I reported nobody. Now, I'm not saying I've not done it. If it's been a very obvious, you know, troll action, and I probably did it a lot more when I was newer to the game, and that may be part of the dynamic. But at this point in the game, I just I don't get that. Why on earth would you need more than ten reports? <laughs> Rebalance of tanks relying on HG shells. Yes, we'll redo the Japanese tanks. <laughs> Golf clap. What about the Italian TDs? A low tier problem, the awful panther. Three questions. Uh, low tier Italian, not yet. Low tier premiums, maybe. I don't know if that's a low tier Italian premium or just in general. The awful panther isn't ready. That's a bummer. Can you roll back the T22 changes? No. No, it would be too OP. That's that's also the reason why it's not, not available. Or is it theirs also the reason why it's not available? Anyway. ELC rebalance, not now. Of all the announcements, what awaits us the fastest? Hey, Frontline is basically ready. The other block, the other one we're going to get to says the exact same thing. So if you're a Frontline fan, it is coming early this year. I'd, who knows? I'd imagine after the holiday ops thing is gone, that's the next big deal. I don't have any inside information on that. I'm just guesstimating. Causing rumors. My buffon is commanding a, my buffoon. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Buffon. Just commanding a Japanese tank, and I don't like it. Well, good choice on the guy you picked to go in the Japanese tank. Will you enable us to change tanker nationality? No, we're not planning to. Oh, man, why not? Why not? Make it expensive, but let people do it. I, I don't get that, man. I, I really don't. They miss so many opportunities of things that don't really unbalance or hurt the game. To make a little bit of money, to have people spend gold on stuff people just like and want to do. Make things easier for them. Make them more interested. Hey, I can move some crews around. It cost me a lot, of, a bit of gold, but hey, I want to. They just say no. I don't. I cannot wrap my mind around that. Now, this may be a technical challenge based on how they've done their their database and their coding. It all is. Anytime you make changes like that that affects your program, it's always a technical challenge. But if the answer was no, right now it's more of a technical challenge that we want to tackle. That would be a better answer. But just nah. That doesn't seem like something that would be good. Well, dude, it would be really good if you could do that because I promise you people would spend gold on it. All right. Any info about the T67? Looking to nerf that, it looks like. All right. So we'll go back over to here because there's a few different ones and it's answered a little bit different. They're going to change experience, earnings, and rank battles for each class. The new matchmaker is more than a template change, according to the, the discussion. It's not just a template, it is a bit more dynamic. No other real specific information there. Frontline, again, they're talking about that. No plans to change the nationality or gender of the crew members. <clears throat> Let's talk about gender real quick. That should just be a drop down selection for every crew member. Making females prizes is stupid. It's 2019. 
It's absolutely moronic. And the only reason they get away with that crap is because it's an RU developed primarily game. And I will come down straight. It's not white knighting. It's just stupid. It really is. I, I can't I can't say how stupid it is. I just did. <laughs> historical battles. Nothing sure about historical battles. I was kind of on the fence about those. I don't know. I don't know. I can. I guess I could see put put the tanks in historical configuration. I think the problem wasn't that the tanks were in historical configuration. It's just that it was a very unbalanced battle that they had created. So instead of doing anything with it, they just got rid of it. This is the in increase the TK penalty again. And he says, there's such a thing as accidental team kill, team damage, when someone took your shell accidentally. And we don't think it's right to punish with catastrophic fines in such cases. I think this that's an analog answer. It's good now, and if we do anything more, it's catastrophic. Well, I think there's some room in between. It should be more to dissuade people a little bit more from TK. Because right now, the... the if I accidentally shoot someone, I'm like, yeah, I lost a little bit of silver. Who cares? All right. Wouldn't it be easier to just limit the amount? This was a better answer. In any case, during the first part of the battle, a huge amount of premium shells would be fired at armored targets, and that would be like if nothing had was changed. Not exactly true, but a more nuanced, correct answer. I already talked about what my thoughts are on that. Are there plans to implement some mods in the main client? Same, same thing. There are always plans to do that. Okay, fair enough. I don't think you guys do it well enough, but that's my opinion. Will there be an option to choose different map? Perhaps the option will be implemented in one of the new versions of the premium account. There's a note here on this one that says, really weird question or weird answer too. Well, I don't think so because it's been talked about a couple times. Uh, I already discussed that. Clearing of dead account names. They're carried out periodically. We don't always announce it. This has a little note, possibly relevant to RU. That's what I said earlier. I don't know. I've never really heard of the NA or EU servers having a purge of names, but there may have been and I, I missed it. Why does username change cost so much? Possibly so that people don't constantly jump from one username to another. Now he said possibly, and he's a community manager, so he may not really understand the bigger picture of why they don't allow it. Kill our database with an insane amount of username change requests. Well, that's why you do things like one a year or two a year. There's, a, there's lots of ways to manage that, so it's, that's not a really satisfying answer. And he may not have a satisfying answer, to be quite honest. Will there be details on the new referral program this year? Unlikely this year, probably in January. Holy cow, a year before they do that. This IS-7 autoloader, that's ridiculous. I'm not even going <laughs> to... Number of reports per day. The other one said 10, but he said not for now. Nerf Japanese, yes, going to nerf. Same question on low tier. It was low tier Italian premiums that he asked. None of those. No TD line. Off the Panther isn't ready. They're not going to change the... They're not going to improve the ELC AMX. The T67 is going to get nerfed, probably. And another great question, the STB1 and the, I think, I think the Leopard, actually. Or has the Leopard been buffed? I don't remember. There was that big Tier 10 buff thing we went through for the last year or so. The STB1 got left on the sidelines and didn't get to play. And I think the Le the Leopard 1 did not get to play either. So hopefully those will get some buffs as well. And that is pretty much that. Let's wrap this up. All right, guys, that's it. A little bit of stream news, a little bit of shilling. Talked about a blog. I've got to go fix the brakes on my truck. So that's my morning done right there. I'll get this edited and sent out. Coffee's cold anyway, so I need to go heat it up. Should be streaming a little bit more. I'm working on two, the T62A and the T3485M reviews. And then working on all these tanks that are less than 100 battles, bringing them up. That's pretty much it for me. We will see you next week.